Hey guys, welcome back to another Friday Reads. This week I want to chat to you about the oldest books on my TBR. I got this idea from April from Aprilius Maximus. I don't really know how to say her channel name, but she also did a video like this. And then I was looking at my bookshelves and all of these books have been unread for a very long time. I've had these books on my shelves since junior high, since high school. All of these I acquired before I graduated high school. I'm not really sure how much before that, but I do know that I had them on my shelves while attending high school. And I graduated over six years ago. Yeah, so these books have been sitting on my shelves, unread, for well over six years. I'm not really going to talk about them in any um, particular order. I'm not sure which ones are the absolute oldest and which ones aren't, but I'm going to maybe like do a random poll for which book to read because each month or something like that and read one of these books per month. I'm not, I haven't worked that out yet, but I know that I need to read these soon or I should just pass them on to someone else who would actually read them. And all of these I'm not really ready to declutter just yet, but yeah, this is going to shame myself basically into reading these or getting rid of them. First, I have these two books. This is Emily of New Moon and Emily Climbs. These are the first two books in, I believe this is a trilogy. Yeah, Emily's Quest is after this. These are by L.M. Mont Montgomery, who wrote Anne of Green Gables. And she said that this series is most autobiographical versus Anne of Green Gables, although of course it doesn't follow her life exactly. It drives me nuts that these are two very different editions. This is like a mass um, paperback, and this is a hardcover. And this I got from my Grampy for my 11th birthday. And I still haven't read it. That is bad. And this one I think I found at a used bookstore or something, knowing that I had the first one. Wow. I've had these books for over 13 years. Next, I have Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. This book I find so intimidating. I've seen other editions that don't look quite so intimidating, but this mass paperback, look how big that is. It's like the size of my head and it's so heavy. It has almost 1500 pages in here. And I got this for Christmas in 2010. So almost eight years and I still have not read it. I actually don't know that much about what this is about ex except that it is a classic and my mom used to, oh what was the like famous saying that Scarlett O'Hara said? I'm not really sure but I do know that if Max were to have been a girl I wanted to name him her Scarlett and my mom was always laughing at me for naming him after like Scarlet from Gone with the Wind even though I hadn't ever read that book and that's literally the only thing I have tied to this. <laughs> Next up I have The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger. I'm not really sure how to pronounce her last name. Um, I think I've watched the movie with, is it Rachel McAd McAdams that's in it? I am so bad at this. See, this is why I never read them because I don't know what they're about. And then I have so many other books on my TBR that I'm really excited about. So I just keep passing over them. And most of them are pretty good size. This one's not too, too bad. It has a little over 500 pages, which is doable for me. So... She meets her husband when she's a little girl and he jumps through time all the time, all the time. And she falls in love with him and they get married apparently, but then he's gone most of the time. 
I don't really know how that works. I think I'm going to find this a little confusing. But yeah, this I've had for a very long time as well. I got this from the secondhand bookstore growing up, but I don't remember exactly how old or how long I've had that. Next is Sea Biscuit by Laura, Laura Helen Brand. Um, I've read half of this and then I set it down. Um, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to read it. Seabiscuit is a racehorse and it's all about his life basically right up until when he dies. And I think that's why I didn't want to finish it is I didn't want to read about a horse dying because that is just a little too close to home for me. So that the riveting tale of grit, grace, luck, and an under, underdog's stubborn determination. And it's a, an American classic apparently. Um, I don't know a whole lot about horse racing, but we had horses growing up and that's why I was interested in reading this. I believe this is my mom's copy though. Next I have Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. I'm not really sure. I remember I got this at the 50 mile yard sale when I was really young and my mom didn't want me to. But I was drawn in by the cover for whatever reason, and I have no idea what this is about. It's a luminous novel about artistic vision and sensual awakening through the eyes of a 16-year-old. And I think that's why she didn't want me to read it. It sounds really inappropriate for the age at which I picked this up. I think I would have been 13 or 14. And I didn't even read the back. I just saw it and I wanted it and I have never ever read it. Next I have um, His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman and I really want to read this. Now that I've started watching booktube um, I've heard great things about this trilogy and this is a bind up of all three of the books which is why it's so big and why I found it so intimidating but it never occurred to me that oh you can probably just read one book at a time and it wouldn't be so bad. But I, this is actually probably one of my top priorities for the next, I don't know, maybe in the fall or winter I want to actually get to read this. This is a really popular fantasy series. And again, you know, don't know that much about it, which is really unhelpful for you guys. I'm sorry. But if you've read any of these books and think I should pick them up ASAP, definitely let me know. I have two here by Jodi Picoult. I read The Pact and it had such an impact on me. Um, that is about suicide. Um, and I the other part um, that really hit home is um, kind of like a spoiler because you don't really know until near the end of the book. So um, I would recommend that. It's definitely, she is known for writing about really tough topics and that is why I haven't picked these up because the pact destroyed me and I know these ones will as well. And I, these are something that you really need to be in the mood for. This is My Sister's Keeper, which I refused to watch the movie because I knew I had this. And this is about um, one daughter is very, very ill. So the parents decide to have another child for the purpose of saving the first one's life. So having someone, they had another child to have another biological child that would have similar DNA to the first and hoping that um, they were a match genetically for um, transplants, things like that. Um, that's what this one is about, which I find so heartbreaking. And I couldn't imagine if either of my children got sick and having to ask the other one to donate a kidney or part of a liver or anything like that, let alone specifically having another child for that purpose. So I don't know if I'm ever going to be ready to read this, but I have that. And the second one is Sing You Home, which I believe is about a teacher that falls in love with their student. I could be completely wrong. Um, she's a music therapist. When an unexpected friendship slowly bloom, blossoms into love, she makes plans for a new life but to her shock and inevitable rage, some people, even those, even though 
those she loves and trusts most don't want that to happen. So I don't know if it's a student or a patient. I'm not really sure. Um, I'll have to look more into this one. I had just picked it up because um, I had just picked up the Pact and My Sister's Keeper and it was on for a good deal at the used bookstore. The last book I want to talk about, which is the last one I've had on my shelf since high school, all my other books, they are still, I still have ones that are really old, but these ones were the oldest. This is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, and I actually looked um, inside of it when I saw it and on the back, and this is from my high school library, and apparently I never returned it. Whoops. This is another classic that I have never read. It has almost 600 pages, which is quite a lot. And again, I know it's about five sisters, I believe, and about their lives, but again, I don't really know too many specifics. So those are the 10 oldest physical books on my TBR. These have all been sitting on my shelves for well over six years, which is completely, completely embarrassing. Let me know how you think I should go about reading them. I was kind of thinking of lining them up on a shelf and then each month um, during my TBR video, um, randomizing a number and picking one that way and maybe reading one per month to get through them in the next year or so. Also, let me know in the comments down below what the oldest book that you have unread on your shelf is. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!